Well, this is our week of Vacation Bible School, and we have five lessons that we'll be looking at this week. And I just want to do a little overview and introduction uh, for our five days that's coming along. Now, the theme of our Vacation Bible School this year is uh, concrete and cranes. If you had a worker's book, uh, you'd have a, a little book like this or a, a guide like this, Concrete and Cranes. And we're talking about the idea of building, of God building. The theme verse that we're using for Vacation Bible School, Philippians 1 and 6. He who hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So it's all about building. It's all about building. The passages of Scripture that we look at are going to be about building. You have a little craft. It's about construction putting things together and building something. And so what we'll be doing each day is looking at one important foundation of our life as a Christian and, the, and what goes into the building of our Christian life. Let me just run through these real quickly as an introduction. And first of all, we're going to look at on, uh, on, on today, we're going to look at the foundation of love. And how important that is of God's love for us. The foundation of love that we'll see that. Well, on Tuesday, we're going to look at the foundation of forgiveness. Well, that's an important element of our new life in Christ. The foundation of forgiveness. Then on the third day, the foundation of worth. Christ died for us because he viewed us as valuable as worth dying for. That's something to think about. That'll be one of our lessons. On the, the fourth day is the foundation of promise where we'll be looking at the resurrection of Jesus and his promise to never leave us, to always be with us. The foundation of promise. And then finally, we'll close out just as Jesus closed out the Sermon on the Mount with an invitation We'll be looking at the foundation of life, which is the rock upon which we build our lives. And in that scripture, Jesus talks about building our life upon the rock. So this is what we're going to be looking at in Vacation Bible School. Now what you'll have each day is a handout. One handout for each day. It's one page back in front for each day. The, on, on one side, now the side that I want you to pull out each day first, we'll have the scriptures uh, sections. There'll be three sections, four sections uh, broken down that we'll be looking at. You'll have some lines that you can make notes, but pull that out. And as I go through the teaching, you can make notes if you'd like to about uh, today's lesson. On the flip side of that page for that day, you'll see some things to think about. So as you see those things, uh, work through those things to think about there for your own life and for you to uh, just respond as you see best. So that's kind of an overview and we're ready to start our uh, first day's lesson. But before I start the first day's lesson, I'd like to begin with a word of prayer, praying for our first day and for our vacation Bible school as well. Let's pray now. Thank you, Father, for vacation Bible school for adults. We know it's for all ages, but we especially thank you that we've got a Vacation Bible School for Adults. These are good lessons. This is a great message, building our life on a good foundation. We pray that each lesson will be clear, that you will give us good understanding of what your word is teaching us. Bless now as we enter into this lesson today on Foundation of Love. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Our first day of Vacation Bible School Bible study, and I'm keeping this real brief, so I'm going to just go right into the Bible study. It's our Bible study today focuses on the, the love of God for us, and the love of God for us is seen in particularly in how Christ loved us to call us to Him to become disciples. Our scripture verses today, by the way, you've got your little notes there with you, our day one 
notes and the little outline of the scripture, you'll notice that the scripture is Matthew 9, verses 9 through 13. This is where Jesus is choosing Matthew. And the point here is that Jesus chooses to love us. We do not earn his love. So I want to point out to you today that the love that we have found in Christ Jesus is an unconditional love. We do not work for or have to earn this love. So that's a lesson we need to know today. Matter of fact, there's a bonus scripture in John 15, verse 9. And that scripture says, As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. So continue ye in my word. Looking at those scriptures, you'll notice in the very first section of your little outline notes, Jesus calls an unlikely man. And when he calls Matthew or Levi, he is an unlikely man because first place he's a, he's a publican, he's a tax collector. He has a bad reputation of being a crooked man. And it's a very unlikely choice for Jesus to make of Matthew. And any of the Pharisees, leading Pharisees at that time, had an opinion of the of uh, tax collectors that was very low. Not just Pharisees. I ought to add that everybody knew tax collectors would actually cheat you more than was fair if they could get away with it. Now, they were collecting taxes for the Roman government. And since Palestine, or the Holy Land as we know it, even Galilee and Judah in the south, were under the authority of the Romans. And so they had to pay taxes. Citizens had to pay taxes. Tax collectors worked for the government to pick up those taxes. Now, Matthew was a Jew, and Jews hated and despised the Roman government. So a Jew working for the Roman government, boy, he was doubly hated. But that's who Jesus loved. And that's who Jesus called to be a disciple. In verse number 9, the scripture says, As Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax office, and he said to him, Follow me. So he arose and followed him. Simply said, an unlikely character to be a follower, to be called to be a follower of Jesus. Now we're going to see the reaction of the Pharisees as they were angered at Jesus calling Matthew. Listen to what he says in verses 10 and 11. Now it happened as Jesus sat at the table in the house, Matthew's house, that behold many tax collectors and sinners came, sat down with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw it, they said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? That's a legitimate question for them to ask because they think of Jesus as a holy man, as something of a rabbi, a person of good reputation and, and uh, scholarly in the word. And he should know a sinner when he sees one. Well, the truth is he does. And he chooses Matthew simply for that purpose because that's Jesus has come to love sinners. Notice in, in the house of Matthew, Matthew is, is surrounded by many of his friends. Other tax collectors are there as well. And that's a good thing to note, is that whenever Christ shows love to us and calls us out to come and invite us to follow him and live with him, we ought to be interested in bringing many other friends of ours to come to meet Jesus that we have met and come to learn of him just like we're learning about him. So the Pharisees raised this question to Jesus' disciples, and notice Jesus' answer, Beginning at verse number 12, when even though they were talking, the Pharisees were talking to the disciples, Jesus heard them, verse 12, and he said to them, those who are well have no need of physician, but those who are sick. Verse number 13, Jesus says, go and learn what this means. And then he quotes, I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Well, that's, that's a Jesus' response to those Pharisees who didn't recognize their own sin. They recognized the sin in, these, in Matthew and these tax collectors, which is fine for them to do that. But you know, it's very easy for us to see sin in other people. 
when actually God sees sin in all people. And Jesus came to demonstrate love for everybody and for sinners in particular because these sinners such as these tax collectors were the kinds of people that Christ had come to save. And that's what he means when he says those who are well don't need a physician. And you know the truth is everybody is unwell. Everybody is sick in sin. And Christ in coming to us demonstrates that he loves us in coming to us. And we did not have to deserve that love. That We did not have to earn that love. That love was completely given to us by Christ himself. That is a wonderful thought to think about how the love of Christ is the basis. His love for us is the basis of the life that Christ is building in us. Now the scripture for Vacation Bible School is we're about to close now. The key scripture for Vacation Bible School is Philippians 1 and 6. Philippians 1 and 6 says, Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. When you got saved and I got saved, Christ started a work in us. And the scripture affirms to us what Jesus started, he built it upon his love. And he will continue what he's doing until he's completed what he's doing. And he'll complete that when he calls us out of this world. To himself. Now let me encourage you, you followed along on one of the, one of the pages or the, the front side of the page of your handout. Flip over to the other side of the page and look at those questions that you should think about now uh, concerning what we just learned. Questions that will, that will challenge us to, to remember when we first recognize that Christ loved us and whether or not we've been asking and inviting other people to come and learn about Christ since the day that we were saved. This is our lesson for the day, and I'm glad you've joined us, and we'll look forward to tomorrow's lesson on the Tuesday session of Vacation Bible School.